How good is this? This is a medieval wheelbarrow and would look perfect at your medieval reenactment event or LARP gathering, perhaps during the SDA. G'day everyone, today we're looking at the medieval wheelbarrow again. Okay, so this is a really fascinating project. Uh, and based on the last one that we did not very long ago, I wanted to do a slightly larger one. This one would be more based on kind of a campaign wheelbarrow. Talk more about that in a second. So the research on wheelbarrows is actually pretty thin. The two best sources that I have are Medieval Rural Life in the Lateral Psalter. Sorry about my trend my pronunciation there, and uh, medieval and renaissance furniture. So it's really interesting because the evidence does suggest that the wheelbarrow wasn't invented until around the 5th or 6th century, that's after the Romans left Britain. Prior to that they were mostly using sleds. But a wheelbarrow is obviously a really useful kind of thing and would probably be put together based on local materials. You do need some specialist tools and equipment and we'll talk about that as we go. Safety is really important in this kind of project. I always use a pair of safety glasses, a mask and a hearing defenders. When I'm working on a project like this, the woods that I use are Tasmanian oak. The alternative to that is pine. I buy my timbers all from the local hardware store, which in Australia is Bunnings. We only really have the one hardware store. Tasmanian oak has the disadvantage of being quite a pricey item, but it's robust, it's hard, it's weather resistant, and it's also fairly um, accurate for the medieval period. So the biggest challenge of course that I had with this one as the last is the wheel. The wheel's a really interesting kind of thing because uh, it's, it does take a lot of very specialist skill to make one. You can't just, uh, you know, kind of bodge one together. It's not going to last and I needed something really that's going to work with the medieval reenactment that I do. Based on a number of um, images that are available in codexes and psalters and medieval artwork, we can see there's probably a, a fairly wide range of variations in design and shape of these things. So I went for this style. So we talked about it being more of a campaign kind of version, something that could lift a lot of gear fairly easily, especially bulky stuff that you'd have on a medieval campaign. You wouldn't necessarily just be using carts and wagons. So this is obviously single wheel, a lot cheaper than having to rely on four wheels for a wagon or two for a cart. Obviously it can just be moved by a single person almost certainly a peasant, um, and doesn't rely on horses or goats or mules or whatever, oxen, to, to pull it. So this is the design that I've come up with and it's based on um, just basically my interpretation and applying my knowledge and understanding of what would people be moving around on campaigns, so especially the peasants, they're going to be moving lots of arrows, bulky stuff like tents and cooking gear, that kind of thing, um, it will very necessary to move and move dist at distance um, on a regular basis. So, so there we go. Alright, so the wheel was the biggest challenge on this one. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, the wheel was a huge challenge. I managed to buy one on uh, Marketplace which was um, probably about 120 years old. Uh, kind of scary but in pretty good condition but it just wasn't good enough condition for me to be using regularly at medieval events and dragging it around the country. So I wanted to go with a newer one. Um, that created some problems because then I'm looking at, well, you know, where can I get one from? Um, there's one guy in Toowoomba, but he charges a lot of money. So Toowoomba, I live in Queensland, Australia. Toowoomba's probably about a two hour drive to my west. And so that's obviously adding into the cost significantly. So where was I going to get one from? Oh, this is a bit of a challenge. Um, every carpenter that I could find just wasn't interested. This was a really pain in the butt kind of thing. Um, I managed to get 
some off Etsy. Um, they're a lighter wood. They're made from, I believe, it's cherry. Uh, so not as not as hard wood. Um, probably won't last. Um, but I put some steel rims on them. Um, well, a friend of mine who's a blacksmith put some steel rims on them. Uh, and that's going to hopefully increase the lifespan. So that's really good. I ended up managing to get a friend of mine to make some. He was looking for some work. Uh, and we'll talk about the wheels that he's made for me because they are fantastic. They are really great. Um, but his wheels only just came in and I've just finished the project. So we'll see, um, we'll see the, the carts that I'm making at the moment. They'll be getting released in the next couple of weeks. Really exciting stuff. Uh, can't wait for your feedback, uh, especially the reenactors out there uh, and the LARPers and, and those kind of the people in the Society of Creative Anachronism. Um, I'd love to get your feedback. All right, so putting this together. So there's a couple of really important things we have to work out fairly quickly. So the first one is the length of the arms of the wheelbarrow. Uh, I picked, I think it was about 1.6 meters on this one, so quite long. But then that seems to be plausible based on some of the, the iconography that's around. And the first job that I decided to do is just basically concentrate on these arms. So we shaped them uh, and that gave us the handles, made it nice and comfortable. Especially if you're going to be sort of pushing this around all day um, and moving long distance over it, it needs to have some sort of you know, comfort to it. If you'd like to challenge me to do a medieval project, whether it's a carpentry project, a sewing project, leatherworking project, or perhaps even blacksmithing, please leave a comment below and ask me what you'd like to challenge me with. Very keen to hear your ideas and suggestions. The next big question was um, the number of slats and kind of the, the width of those. So you basically figure that out based on the angle and length of the arms and that gives you the positioning and the number of the slats. So that was pretty easy to work out. Um, and I decided in my plans that I was going to go like a cage on the front of the wheelbarrow to give me some support as the, the load goes forwards. Alright, so to make that happen uh, I needed to cut some dados and also um, some mortises and tenons. So the dados I just simply cut with a circular saw and that was set to a particular depth. That was really important. That gave me the kind of the, the, ca the cage at the front of the wheelbarrow and the, um, the legs kind of in the middle. So the mortises, um, I tried a couple of different ways to make these, but I found the easiest, quickest and simplest way to do it was just hammer and chisel. It sounds a bit old tech for me, because um, I do like my power tools and I use them a lot and I understand that, but I found hammer and chisel work really well, very, very effective and it just so quick. Um, and you can adjust the depth and you can get to the right depth and shape that you want. Uh, just super quick. So that was all done. Um, I finished this off with, with routing and sanding uh, just to give me kind of a bit more of a, a nicer shape to it and a nicer finish. Put those to one side. Now the next thing is the deck. So I decided to use, um, this is 12mm Tasmanian oak by about 65mm, so nice solid slats. Um, I, the mortises are about 10 millimeters deep on each side, so that gives me like plenty of strength in there. I used a glue called Sikaflex, it's fantastic, it works for me every time. Um, I've never had a problem with it, and it just, just works, it just is, it's great. So Sikaflex is the way to go for me, uh, and if you just cut those, um, obviously to the right shape and get them into the, the mortises, they fitted perfectly. Um, this is probably where the, the project slowed down a little bit because you have to kind of allow 24 hours or so for the glue to dry properly. Uh, at the moment where I live, 
it's very very humid and that kind of affects the glue uh, but it's also incredibly um, humid which means that the glue dries very quickly but doesn't set properly so you kind of have to leave the extra hours in there for it to work properly uh, and if you don't then things will just fall apart and that's not good all right so we set the deck out and we've got the um, the, the, the slats pushed into the arms and that's given us our deck so that's fantastic all right so the next part of this was the legs uh, again I've just used 32 by 65 millimeter Tasmanian oak um, it's just a very readily available hardwood uh, I like it it works well I very rarely had problems with it um, and the guys at the local hardware store are very good because they know that I buy a lot of this stuff so um, they're happy to look after me if there are problems and we just get that resolved all right um, so legs um, I put a slat across the bottom that added a lot of strength to it um, and because the dados have been cut very kind of um, it's a very tight fit for the legs to go into uh, I found that just worked incredibly well so um, really happy with that the fit was just absolutely spot on very very happy so the last piece was the cage now I decided to build the cage this way because I don't know I don't have the tools or the experience or the knowledge or the competency to try and sort of bend hardwood uh, maybe one day someone will teach me perhaps if you know some great videos on this one link me into them but uh, I'm really going to need someone local to teach me because I just I just don't know and it's a it's a lot of skill to learn as, as I understand it um, there's a theory behind it and there's also a practicality so be really interested to learn that one day but for today uh, on this project uh, I've just done it this way so we just basically built this up um, this protects the wheel a bit but it also protects the load so the load kind of stays where it needs to and then there's the wheel at the front the next step is I added a crossbar to this kind of upper section of the wheelbarrow and I've marked in where I'm going to add the dowel onto the nose section which will kind of protect the, the wheel And something like this I think is just a, it's a great little project to do you can chip away at it like an hour a day across a week or a fortnight um, and you've got a really fantastic item and this is such a good item as well this wheelbarrow because it adds so much depth and immersion to your campsite so if you're into D&D or LARPing or the SCA that kind of thing and you do events something like this is fantastic to have because it just creates so much visual immersion and the dynamic is really cool but it's so functional as well so around a medieval campsite LARPing campsite that kind of thing um, you create this kind of as I say the depth of immersion but you also it's very relatable it's understandable for people uh, all right so obviously in the real world in the historical world something like this would just be made from whatever bits of timber you can scavenge from a hedgerow um, and and maybe like an hour or two you know a few hours to make one bind it together with um, maybe some kind of natural fiber cordage or uh, rawhide that kind of thing they didn't really have access to nails nails are incredibly expensive made by blacksmiths um, so it would really just be that glue could be used you could use like a cheese glue or something um, but you'd need a specialist wheelwright to create the wheel for you alrighty guys um, so so um, I'm just so happy with this hey like I mean it's it's just come out so well and um, you know when you when you look at it, it it's really good uh, but from a practical point of view um, 
you know, this is this is working really well for me. I'm really excited about it. Can't wait to get it out to events. I will be at Abbey 2024, definitely, because it's my birthday. Um, so I will definitely be there. So if you guys are going, drop a comment below. I'm really looking forward to seeing you. I've seen some of my friends there before, and it's um, it's really great. It's a fantastic opportunity to catch up with everyone. And uh, I really just can't wait. It's um, something I'm really looking forward to. So. Uh, hopefully we'll get um, some tents there this year. I'd really love to, um, but there's a lot going on in my personal life and I, I just don't know if I'm going to get the group at the point where we can go to the events or maybe that's going to be like a 2025 thing. Who knows? Um, who knows what the future is going to bring. But if you are going to Abbey, drop me a comment below. Really like to um, to see you there. All right, guys. There we go. That's that's the video. Like uh, that's the build. It's really simple and straightforward. If you want plans, please leave a comment. Uh, just say the word plans, and I'll um, I'll see if I can get some plans made up. Otherwise, really fantastic to see you guys all, and um, can't wait to see you in my next video. Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll catch you in my next video.